Okay, the first step is to go to the link I have in the description and download Blender GIS. Download the zip file and then go into Blender. Open the preferences and then go on to add ons and then install and then go down to your downloads. Install Blender GIS Master. Once you install the add on, uh, scroll down and go to the cache of Blender GIS and then set up a folder. Uh, you need this every time you reload Blender for some reason. Just set a folder and then you're good. Alright, okay, so now that you've done that, click the GIS tab in the corner. Then click Web Geodata and Base Map. Uh, I like to keep it on Google, but you can use any of them. Uh, okay, click OK. And then normally it'll bring you out to the world view. And then what you want to do to get your location is click G. And I want somewhere in Yosemite, so I'm, I'm going to type in half dome. Whoops. I cannot type. And then go to the zoom level that you want. Uh, 15 is about like you could see a city for 15. Okay, and then. Okay, line up your screen with the area you want to export into the base map. And once you want to export it, uh, first click L and then zoom in twice to like 17 if you're on 15 and that'll increase the resolution to like a higher zoom so you get more detail on the rocks and all the trees and stuff and then once you get to a detail you want click E and it'll export the image onto a plane and then once you have that click GIS web geodata get outside TM and it will put the height map onto that plane if it loads. Okay. But as you can see, the resolution is really high. Like, you can see that bridge down there. And that's because we clicked L and did that. And uh, this is just a waterfall in Yosemite. Half domes right here. And there's a nice valley right here. So, first, I'm going to apply both of the modifiers in the modifier tabs. I'm going to add another subdivision surface just to get a higher resolution so it's easier to select it when we go into weight paint mode. And the next step is to go into weight paint mode and to paint all the areas that um, would have trees in it. So I'm just going to do that real quick. Hey, once you're done painting, you want to choose your camera angle. I only painted this area of the map because that's really the only spot that I'm going to have shown in my render. So I'm going to place the cursor down somewhere, and then I'm going to go Shift A, and I'm going to add a camera. And I'm going to change the outliner view up here to a 3D viewport so I can uh, see the camera. So I'm going to click zero on that 3D viewport and then um, I'm gonna move it around using this oh yeah I forgot I have two cameras on my scene I should probably go delete that first camera so delete that first camera and then turn the outliner back into 3D viewport and click zero on the numpad it will get you to camera view and then if you click the camera here can adjust it. Let's see what the camera's seeing. Well, first you need to go into the camera tab and then uh, change the clip start to, let's see, like any big number. Doesn't really matter. So you do that or else you'll be able to see what is going on. So let's adjust the camera. 
do a view that we would like to have. Okay, and let's go here, and I'm going to want a bit more of the side, and a bit more of the sky. And then I'm going to go to the camera tab again, and I'm going to change my focal length to around like 38, just because that nice wide perspective of a uh, landscape shot. Okay, and I'm going to ink a little bit further down. Okay. So once you have your camera set up, uh, we're gonna go click the height map or our map, and then we're gonna go to the particle tab and add a particle system and click hair. And then at this point, uh, you're gonna want to import a tree asset. Uh, there's some good uh, tutorials. I'll link in the description to how to make uh, trees. And once you have those trees made. Uh, import them into your world. So that's what I'm going to do real quick. Okay, so once you have your tree assets imported, uh, you're going to want to do Control G, uh, which creates a new collection. And you're going to want to name it Trees or something like that. And you're going to want to go to the particle settings again and go to Render and Render as Collection and then Instance Collection Trees. And when we go up here, you should see that there are tiny trees, barely indistinguishable trees on the map. So we're going to want to scale that up. Not that high, though. We're not going to want them too high. And yeah, now we have trees on our map, uh, but we're going to want to use the object rotation. So the trees actually stand up. And as you noticed, uh, when I went down here, um, here, if you want to get this little pie chart open, you click the tilde button on the top left corner of the keyboard under the escape, and then just click view selected. Um, when you import your assets, you want to make sure they're sideways, because for some reason, uh, if you have them standing up, the trees on the particle system end up being sideways, which is weird. So you want to rotate it like 90 degrees, and for some reason, then they stand up. So yeah. Whoops. Okay. So we're gonna view this, and then we're gonna to want to go back into the particle settings, and go into the field. No. Fort. No. Vertex groups. And you're gonna to want to click density, and assign it to group. So as you can see, the trees are only where we painted on the weight paint. So there's trees where there should be trees. At this point, you can go back into weight paint mode, and you can repaint where the trees are needed, as you can see on the camera. So a good way to do that is just like C, click tab, and see like where you need it, and then click tab again, and paint where the trees are needed. So we're going to need some trees up here. And then after that, what you want to do is you're going to want to add an HDRI to your scene. So we're going to get an HDRI Haven and uh, download one of their HDRIs. So I want kind of a sunrise, sunset scene. So I'm going to go for this one. Spirit, Spirit Sunrise. And I'll have HDRI Haven linked in the description. Um, so once you do that, download that, you're going to want to go into the shading tab and go under world and you're going to want to switch the background out with an environment node. You got to put that into the surface and then you're going to want to go into, oh, you're going to want to click this and click open. You're going to want to go to your HDRI folder, click a uh, folder you want and if you can see here there is that. Okay, once you add that, you're going to want to add a texture coordinate node and then a mapping node. 
And you're going to want to plug the generate into the vector, and then the vector into the vector. And then you can modify the rotation of the thing. So let's go into layout. And if you want to see your um, if you want to see your scene viewport shading, click this drop-down menu and click uh, scene world lights and scene world, and that'll have the scene world. Okay, so obviously I want to go back into shading because I do not want any of that in the background. Oh, and once you go to a new tab, you're going to need to do that again. So let's rotate it on the X. Uh, like that. And then let's rotate it on the Y. Like that. And go here. See if we still have nice sun. Yep, we're good. And then let's go back into viewport shading. And let's start adding some fog. So let's go back to layout. Get your cursor, put it in the center of the valley. Click Shift A and add a plane. Now scale up the plane till it covers the valley. Uh, you can scale by clicking S and drag it up. So it covers the bottom of the valley. And then we're going to want to go into edit mode, scale it, uh, click the edges, and scale it down so there's not much um, left that's not shown by the scene. So let's go into camera view so we can drag that in. And for some reason, this is rotated a bit, so we're going to rotate it sideways. Or it looked a bit rotated. You can rotate it for your liking. Um, so now we have it like that. Let's go into the modifier tab. Click add modifier and go into subdivision surface. Now go into simple and bring it up to at least five. And then click apply. Click tab to go into edit mode. Go to your camera. Um, go to the vertices select and then click zero. Zero enables uh, proportional editing. And so you can drag uh, multiple vertices around where it is. So I'm going to want to make it so that the edges are higher and the middle of the fog, which is, is going to be lower. So we have that now. I think that's pretty good. And then what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go to the internet and download a cloud PNG. Uh, personally, I like this one. I'll link it in the description. Then go into Blender. Uh, go to the user preferences and go into add-ons and search import images as planes. Select that. And then go into files, import images as planes. And then find the cloud image that you downloaded and import it as a plane. And then you're going to want to click the plane again that we made and go into the particle settings, add a particle, go to hair, and then go into render. You're going to want to render it as object, and then choose the image we just imported. And then you're going to want to scale it up, because it's really tiny right now. You see it pops into view. And we want scale randomness to be about 50, because we don't want them too tiny. Let's add some more to the scene, and that's good. So now we're going to want to go click the cloud in the outliner, and then go into shading, and then click the tilde again. You go if you selected. Um, oops, it's inside of something right now, and we're going to want to mess with the shading. So let's go back into object. And let's add a mix node, mix shader node, and then transparent. So as you can see, when we mess with this factor, it makes it more and less transparent. So I'm going to want like 0.783, but let's go to the camera. I think around there would be good. Just going to render view. It's going to be terrible. 
actually click on the plane again and go into particle settings and then under render you're going to want to uncheck show emitter and then in the final render you won't be able to see the emitter anymore sadly you can see it in here but in the final render you won't be able to and I actually want to add oh wrong one I want to add more fog to this so it's a bit thicker and then since we're doing with alpha you're going to want to go into the camera settings um, you're going to want to go into light paths and you're going to want to make the transparency up to about a thousand if you didn't then uh, there'd be a bunch of black marks in your fog all right so now that we're done setting up all this we're going to want to go into the compositing or not yeah compositing we're going to want to click use nodes and then we're going to want to render out our scene so before you render you want to go to passes data check the mist and you want to go down to the world tab and then you're going to want to click the mist pass and then let's go to the viewport and our render pass we're going to choose mist and then we're going to move the depth until the white is mostly in the back of the mountains. So we're going to want to do that. And then click render. Hey, and once the render is complete, you're going to want to go into the compositing tab and check use nodes in the corner. Um, so we're going to go shift A, add a viewer node first, and then we're going to add a mix node, and then we're going to drag the mist pass into the mix node, and then we're going to drag the mix into the viewer, and let's mess with the factor a bit until we like the fog. So when I went to Yosemite, I noticed that um, most of the time when you're looking at a mountain far away, it's usually has a blue haze to it. And I wanted to add that into the scene. And we're gonna do that using a color ramp. So let's put the color ramp in the mist and click on the white and then click on the color dropper tool and click on the sky and then let's mess with the factor a bit until we get something we like so as you can see it's adding that light bluish haze to the background this is what it looks like full so I want that and then let's add a RGB curves Let's put one right here and put one right here. So let's go into UV editing and go viewer node, and then we can just see what we have made. And for our final render, which we are ready for now, just go into the particle settings. Well, first go into layout, uh, switch it back to combined, and click on the mountain. And go in particle settings and switch it back to like 50,000, which is a good number for a lot of trees. But just be warned, it takes a lot. Okay, actually, before we do that, um, before we do our final render, uh, go into. Oh god. <laughs> yeah, it's lagging a lot now. Um, go to source, and you're gonna wanna do the particles per face, like, just bump that up. Like 136, it makes it so it's a lot more random, and it's not just one tree per face. So yeah, now that you're done with that, you can render it out, and you can get this photo. Uh, I edited this photo in Lightroom. But, and I cropped it, but you can get the same results.
with just using Blender Compositing. So, see you next time.